Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. When you think of Russia, comedy isn't the first thing that springs to mind. In fact, it's probably the last. But there's a lucrative stand-up scene where comedians can make one million pounds. That's a far cry from the crumbs Edinburgh fringe comics make, but Russian comedians are also Putin's mouthpiece. Milo Edwards started his comedy career like many do, at the Cambridge Footlights. But his trajectory since then has been far from normal. After university in 2015 Milo moved to Russia, where he ended up performing as a stand-up comedian on TV. Yes, he did make jokes about Putin. And no, you absolutely can't now. I taught myself to speak Russian at university. One of my good friends from my course was a Russian guy. I went to Moscow a couple of times with him, so I got interested in it, Milo tells usnews.co, UK at the Edinburgh City Cafe, a bit of a fringe institution. I thought if I got to Russia for a year I will be fluent. So I did, then I got scouted on the stand-up in English in a bar in Moscow for this job on Russian TV. Wait, what? I had a screen test and I got on this show, which was kind of like the American show, Last Comic Standing, Milo explains. It was a competition and I came second in that, then it went into a show which is their equivalent of live at the Apollo. I did that for two years then came home. Yes, he performed stand-up comedy in Russian. On TV. Just the day before we chatted, Milo had bumped into a friend from his time in Russia. I yelled his name to him in Russian. He looked terrified and like he was about to be arrested, quips Milo, who show how revolting. Sorry to offend is at the Edinburgh Fringe until the end of the month. It's whiplash smart, funny, and explores class in the UK, not Russian politics. Milo is tempted to describe the stand-up comedy scene Russia nine years ago as primitive, but thinks it's not quite the right word. He explains, it's so new there. They only started having stand-up on TV in maybe 2012. So no one in Russia really knew what it was until then. Then it became immensely fashionable, but there was no culture of stand-up to back it up. So they had a few comics who were on TV. It was going through this developmental stage that we had here in the 70s or 80s with one-liners. But then you'd have those comics going to the West and seeing what other comics were doing. So you'd sometimes have something straight out of the 80s, but inflected with these weird postmodern Stuart Lee style touches. While Moscow audiences were generally fine, it became varied as you got to the more isolated Russian towns and cities. One time I was doing a gig in this town in Russia which was the butt of the S asterisk asterisk T town jokes. It has a McDonald's, so it was fine. Well, it did have a McDonald's, not anymore. That's generally a mark of safety in Russia. If there's no McDonald's your F asterisk 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 edition. Anyway, Milo was performing in a restaurant there, a favorite venue for stand-up comedy in Russia, I'm told. There were 300 people sitting at tables in a dining hall. It was a mixed bill, with stand-up and singing. I had to go on after this act, which was two women in leotards pole dancing either side of an old lady singing Soviet ballads. Russian gigs were more fun than the English ones, Milo says. Most Russian people wouldn't go to English-speaking gigs to laugh, but would simply applaud if they understood something. They were a training ground for audiences to practice their English. In 2015, comedy was censored in Russia, but not in a wholly political sense. In live work, you could pretty much say what you want. I don't think that's the case these days. I think people have definitely been arrested for stuff they say live in the last few years. But at the time no one cared about anything you said live. On TV it was censored, but mostly for socially conservative reasons. They would be careful if you were talking about sex, drugs, gay stuff. Anything like that. It was mostly because it would upset the viewers, not the government. But there was one bizarre rule which meant Milo and his fellow comics could talk about drugs, but couldn't give people advice on how to take drugs. People would say I indulged in cannabis, so you couldn't say you smoked it because that would be instructing people on how to take it, chuckles Milo. I remember you could make Putin jokes, because the pee.